meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. Well, it's morning in the Burns home, and while Gracie sips her after-breakfast coffee, George stares gloomily into space. On his plate are a couple of untouched cold fried eggs, which look much happier than he does. Uh, you haven't eaten a thing, dear. Don't you want your nice eggs? No. They're very fresh. No, thanks. They're less than 24 hours old. I just fried them yesterday morning. I can't eat. What's the matter, George? Does your darling little headache? No. Is there a pain in your precious little chest? No. Does your tiny little back hurt? No. Is there an ache in your great big... No. <laughs> well, sometimes your feet do bother you. Oh, I'm not sick. I'm just discouraged because I'm a failure. You are not. Oh, yes, I am. You married a poor, miserable, broken-down flop. Oh, nonsense. You're just repeating what you hear. <laughs> It's true. I'm a complete bust. First, I ran for political office and got one vote, my own. <laughs> then you told me Harry James wanted me to sing with his band, and that was a mistake. A mistake which Harry James will regret. You have a gorgeous voice. Oh, let's face it. I've got a voice like an owl with asthma. <laughs> That's not true. You have the voice of a songbird. Why, it's as though a nightingale flew down your throat and laid an egg there. <laughs> You're such a comfort to me. And I always will be. What if you can't be in politics? What if you can't sing with Harry James? There are dozens of things you can do well, so cheer up. What things, for instance? So cheer up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whenever I feel low, I go down and buy myself a new hat, and then I feel better. Maybe that would make you feel better. I doubt it. Well, it's worth trying. I'll go right down and buy myself a new hat. Never mind. <laughs> to the door. Oh, good morning, Mr. Postman. Good morning, Mrs. Burns. <laughs> Delicious morning, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is lovely. All nature is in a playful mood today. I gave way to an impulse myself, impetuous boy that I am. Oh, what did you do? I kept thinking how wonderful it would be to let the breeze caress my bare skin and finally, I could resist no longer. Mr. Postman, you didn't. Yes, I took off my cap. <laughs> well, here's your mail, Mrs. Burns. Oh, thank you. Maybe this will cheer my husband up. Oh, wait a minute. This mail is for Dinah Shaw. Oh, dear. Did I get it mixed up again? You see, your number is 202 Cannon Drive, and hers is 220. Oh, yes, I know it's confusing. We even get packages belonging to Dinah Shaw. <laughs> the other day, George unwrapped a package, and it was a size 26 girdle. <laughs> oh, that's rich. Oh, yeah. <laughs> George wears a 42. <laughs> Well, I guess there's no mail today. Goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. Who was it, Gracie? The postman, dear. Oh, swell. Any mail for me? Oh, I'm sorry, darling. It was all for Dinah Shaw again. Oh, nuts. I wish people would learn that we live at 202 Cannon Drive and she lives at 220. Anyway, that shows you how important I am. The only, the only, the only mail I get belongs to somebody else. Oh, well, don't you worry. You'll soon be getting plenty. What do you mean? Well, I know how much you enjoy getting mail. So to make you happy, I opened accounts at seven new stores. I'm delirious. <laughs> Our hero's feeling pretty miserable. He's convinced that life is a sham and a mockery. But at this very moment in Kansas City, Missouri, big things are shaping up for our miserable little hero. Let's listen in on a meeting of the Kansas City Chamber of Commerce. Uh, gentlemen, 
gentlemen, the votes have been tabulated, and I'm pleased to report that Miss Dinah Shore has been chosen Kansas City's favorite singer. Oh, that's fine. Now, Mr. Secretary, send a telegram to Dinah Shore inviting her to be guest of honor next Tuesday night at the opening of our Fifth War Loan Drive. Uh, do you have her address? Oh, uh, yes, sir. It's uh, 202 Cannon Drive, Los Angeles. Or is it uh, 220? I think it's 202. Yes, that's right. I'll send it to Dinah Shore, 202 Cannon Drive. Oh, wait. Let's not be so formal. Let's show Dinah how we really feel about her. Just address the wire to Kansas City's favorite singer, 202 Cannon Drive, Los Angeles. Don't pout anymore. It warps your little rosebud mouth all out of shape. I can't help it. Well, I know what will cheer you up. The sound of your own glorious singing. I'll never sing again. Oh, please, darling. Unlock those little silver tonsils and just blast Mama right off her chair. No. Oh, please, George. Just let me hear one beautiful flute-like note. That was the prettiest one there. That was the door buzzer. Oh. Come in. Telegram. Oh, thank you. George, give the boy a tip. Here you are, son. Keep the change. Gee, thanks. That'll pay my rent. On a phone book for three minutes. George! George! Look at this wire. I told you you were great. What is it? Great, you've been chosen Kansas City's favorite singer, and they want you to sing there at the opening of the big war bond rally. Wow, Kansas City's favorite singer. Yeah, and look what else it says. Many thanks and a big hug and a kiss from the mayor. <laughs> they must have women doing everything in Kansas City. Oh, George, George, this is wonderful. And I'm so glad that Kansas City will be the scene of your big triumph. <laughs> Remember what else happened in Kansas City, darling? Sure. That's where we got married. Yeah. That's where a certain tall, handsome man slipped the ring on my finger. Yeah. And then you paid him for the ring and we got married. Gee, Kansas City's favorite singer. Oh, Kansas City, here I come. Jimmy Cash, our young tenor, sings for you the romantic ballad, Amor. Amor, Amor, Amor. This word so sweet that I repeat means I adore you. Another word with meaning so clear My lips try to whisper sweeter things in your ear But somehow or another Nothing sounds quite so dear As this soft caressing word I know Amor, amor, my love Life divine, say you'll be mine and love me only. Thank you, Jimmy. Well, a telegram inviting Dinah Shore to sing in Kansas City next week was mistakenly delivered to George Burns. The telegram was addressed to Kansas City's favorite singer, so that was good enough for George. Gee, Kansas City's favorite singer? 
Oh, Kansas City, here I come. Right. Judge. Back. Judge. Where? Judge. I, Judge. Huh? What's that? Judge. Judge. <laughs> Stop saying. They don't appreciate you in this town. Don't let another golden note sneak out of that precious little throat until we get outside the Los Angeles city limits. Well, isn't that a little selfish? No. It'll serve the people right. They, they didn't want you when they had you. So now we'll just walk out and they'll be stuck here with Bing Crosby and Frank Sinatra and Nelson Eddy and Dennis Morgan. Yeah, and Dinah Shaw. Yeah. I don't see them being chosen a favorite of any city. That's right. Oh, Kansas City, here I come. Right. Judge. Uh, back. Judge. Oh, where? Judge. Uh-huh. Judge. Uh-huh. Judge. Uh-huh. <laughs> Judge, stop singing. Don't throw that glorious stuff around here anymore. Hollywood doesn't even deserve a hum. Maybe you're right. Certainly. They didn't even have the decency to put your footprints in the concrete at Gorman's Chinese. Well, I'll bet after Kansas City has heard you sing, they'll put you in concrete clear up to your neck. <laughs> Come in. Hi, folks. Oh, Bill, you're the first to hear the news. What? They want George in Kansas City. Well, George, don't budge unless they produce extradition papers. <laughs> they want me to sing there. Here, look at this telegram. Well, I'll be darned. In the municipal auditorium before 12,000 people. George, this is important. You said it. Hand me that phone. Hello? Hello, long distance? Uh, would you get me the municipal auditorium in Kansas City, Missouri? What's the idea? Well, I'm checking up on that auditorium. You can't just sing any place. Bill, it's great. Tibbet sings there. Nelson Eddy. Mark Nelly. Well, those guys aren't George Burns. I gotta know it's right. Uh, hello? Is this the manager of the municipal auditorium in Kansas City? Yes. Well, would you please step into the washroom and see if there's plenty of swan soap there? <laughs> Give me that phone. Well, George, you, you know you'd be lost without swan. After all, it's the new white floating soap. There's four soaps in one. Bill, why don't you pack up and go to Kansas City with us? Oh, Gracie, I... I well, there are that. lots of pretty women there. Well, Gracie, pretty women don't bother me. No? No, but maybe they will in Kansas City. Let's go. <laughs> I can show them how to wash dishes with swine. Just wait till they get a load of those swine sets. Okay, Bill, run home and get packed. Gee, Kansas City's favorite singer. I still can't figure out how they happened to pick me. Well, George, I guess Kansas City is proud of the fact that you're a native son. And I'm a native of New York. That's what Kansas City is proud of. <laughs> See you later, folks. Oh, don't mind them, dear. You're a success now. Greater even than Sinatra. You think so? Well, sure. Sinatra's had his day. Now it's your turn to hold America in the hollow of your chest. <laughs> I guess so. Well, I think I'll go and do a little packing. Come in. Why, Tootsie Sag. Hello, oh, Gracie. Oh, Tootsie, have you heard the news? George and I are going to Kansas City. Kansas City? Oh, I've been corresponding with a the man there. You have? Uh-huh. I met him through the Lonely Hearts Correspondence Club. Why, Tootsie, how romantic. Yes. He sent me a postcard, and then I sent him a postcard. He sent me a letter, and then I sent him a letter. He sent me his picture, and then I sent him my picture. Gracie, what's holding up the mail from Kansas City? <laughs> well, Tootsie, maybe your picture was lost. Why don't you have another one taken in a bathing suit? You know, like Betty Grable. Oh, well, I couldn't look like Betty Grable. She's so... So curvy. Well, not as curvy as you. <laughs> oh, you mean? Well, it? sure. I'll bet your shoulders are much rounder. <laughs> Gracie, I wish I could go to Kansas City with you so I could find that man and marry him. Oh, but I'll bet George won't let me. Well, he might, Tootsie. You see, George feels very romantic about Kansas City because that's where we spent our honeymoon. Really? Yes. <gasps> Oh, what a glorious honeymoon. I've never tasted such steaks. <laughs> oh, here comes George now. I'll ask him real nice. Uh, Gracie, I think I'll run down and get the railroad ticket. Uh, hello, Georgie. Hello, kid. Uh, George, can we take Tootsie to Kansas City? What? 
and frighten those nice people? I should say no. Darn it, I'll never get a husband. Oh, well, now, don't worry, Tootsie. We'll get you to Kansas City somehow. And you'll have your honeymoon there just like George and I did. Oh, gee, I hope so. Oh, oh, that reminds me, Tootsie. You know, there are certain things every young bride should know. Now, George and I have a book that we read. It, uh, it made our honeymoon a glorious experience. Would you like to borrow it? Well, well what's the book called? Fifty Card Games for Two People. Time for Felix Mills and his orchestra with the Swan Tet. It's a brand new novelty called The Doodlebug Song. <laughs> George has been sailing since he got that telegram addressed to Kansas City's favorite singer. Meanwhile, at the home of Kansas City's really favorite singer... <laughs> Hello? Yes, this is Dinah Shore. <laughs> Kansas City calling. Oh, put him on. Hello? No. No, I didn't get any telegram. What? Kansas City's favorite singer? Well, thank you. At a bond rally? Oh, I'd love to be there. Oh, uh, how about train reservations? Oh, you have? Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I can leave tonight. Okay, Kansas City, I'll be seeing you. Thanks again. Bye. <laughs> And now, back to George, who was waiting in line to get his train reservations to Kansas City. His head is so far in the clouds, he doesn't notice what's happening at the ticket window ahead of him. Here you are, lady. You're lucky to get this. Oh, I know. I know. And thank you so much. This is wonderful. A railroad ticket to Pasadena. <laughs> oh. And I only have to wait till November. <laughs> thank you. Next, please. Uh, I'd like to get a half-fare ticket for my little boy. He's going to Albuquerque. 
Okay, that'll be $50. Oh, but that's the full fare. I want a ticket for a little boy. Don't worry. By the time he gets a seat on the train, he'll be a grown man. <laughs> Next. Give me two lowers to Kansas City for tonight. <laughs> Would you say that again? <laughs> Give me two lowers for Kansas City for tonight. <laughs> I guess there'll be a lot of you Republicans showing up now. <laughs> What'd you say? Oh, nothing, nothing. Well, if you haven't got two lowers, a bedroom will do. Oh, a bedroom will do. Yeah. And is there any special kind of train that you'd like? Or is the kind that goes choo-choo all right? Oh, choo-choo is fine with me. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, now about your bed. Would you like the pillow stuffed with Kleenex? Huh? And uh, don't worry about oversleeping. We'll have the conductor come in every hour and stick a Hershey bar in your mouth. <laughs> You wouldn't be pulling my leg, would you? No, the porter will do that at Wichita. <laughs> what is this? Just give me my tickets. Are you kidding? Next. But I've got to sing in Kansas City. Next. But I don't... You heard him say next. Scram. <laughs> okay. Now, what can I do for you, madam? My husband got sick, and I want to cancel this double bedroom to Kansas City tonight. Oh, wait. Can I buy it from you? Sure, why not? Just give me the hundred bucks. Madam, I could kiss you for this. Okay, but that'll make it two hundred. <laughs> Darn it, Gracie. There must be some way I can get to Kansas City with you. I want to get married. Hey, wait a minute. I think I've got an idea. What, Gracie? That trunk over there. You could hide in that and nobody would know a thing about it. Well, gee, it looks awfully small for a tall girl like me. Oh, nonsense. You can bend at the waist and knees, don't you? <laughs> All we have to find is one more place we can bend you. <laughs> okay. If I thought it would get me a man, I'd squeeze into an empty toothpaste tube. <laughs> gee, I told you oh, quick, I hear George. Get into the trunk. All right. I'll, I'll try. There, yeah, yeah. yeah. there. That's it. She's all me in the trunk, Grace. Oh, yes. <laughs> I bet you haven't had your feet in your mouth since you were a baby. <laughs> well, here goes. Hi, Gracie. I'm all packed. Oh, Bill, it's you. I just locked Tootsie Sagwell up in his trunk. What? Tootsie in that trunk with no air holes? Give me that key, quick. Why? I want to swallow it. Oh, Bill. <laughs> Tootsie. Well, what's the big idea, girls? Well, George doesn't want Tootsie to go to Kansas City with her, so she's going in this trunk. Well, Gracie, she can't ride clear across the desert like that. You've at least got to put some water in there for her. Hey, that's right. Well, sure, Tootsie. It gets dry and dusty, and you'll want to wash with swan. <laughs> Here, here's a bar of swan, the new white floating soap. Oh, Bill, all you think about is soap. I'm going to Kansas City to be married. Yeah, Tootsie has been corresponding with a man through the Lonely Hearts Club. And now he's going to see her in person. He is? Well, sure. Missouri is a show-me state. Well, Tootsie, you're in no state to be shown. <laughs> You're just sorry that... Oh, look, here comes George. Quick, to the end of the trunk. All right. Well, Gracie, I got the tickets. Oh, hello, Bill. Hi, George. I'm all packed and ready, dear. Tell them to handle this trunk carefully. There's something special in it. Gracie, we're not taking that old broken-down wreck to Kansas City. George Burns, you peek. <laughs> What's, uh, what's in the trunk? Oh, oh, you don't know? Why, uh, it's, um, uh, the, uh, swan soap? Are you asking me or telling me? No, well, I'm telling you, it's swan soap. You never know when a little Kansas City baby might crawl up to you and ask you to bathe the swan. 
Gracie. Well, Swan's great for bathing babies because it's so mild and gentle. Right, Bill? Right, Gracie. Look, I plan to bathe very few babies in Kansas City. <laughs> Probably not more than two or three babies tops. Oh, George, just don't bathe their tops. <laughs> Look, watching this... And remember, George Swan breaks in two, right there? Right, Gracie. That's so you can put half in the bathroom for your hands and face tub or shower, and half in the kitchen for dishes and light laundry. This trunk is not going to Kansas City. I'm going to take it back to the garage. No, wait there. You go get your grip. I'll do it. You'll do it? Gracie, this is a heavy trunk. That's a job for a man. <laughs> well, guess that narrows it down to me. <laughs> Okay, Samson. I'll go get my grip. You're quick, Bill. Carry it out to your car and take it to the station. Yeah, all, all right, Gracie. Tootsie, Tootsie. Yes, Gracie? Tootsie, it's happening. At last, you're being carried over the threshold by Bill Goodwin. <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> well, Gracie, call a cab. We're on our way. Well, Kansas City, here I come. Right. Judge. Uh, back. Judge. Uh, where? Judge. Hi. Judge. Huh? Judge, stop singing. Those golden notes are not for Hollywood's ears anymore. Remember? Oh, that's right. They haven't given you a chance in this town. All this time, your town has been right under their very noses, and they couldn't smell it. <laughs> But the people in Kansas City smelled you 1,500 miles away. Come on. seconds, and immediately after, you'll hear the very latest CBS News reports from the invasion. Meanwhile, here's something you can do tomorrow to help back up the men who are fighting overseas. Take that can of waste kitchen fat right over to your butchers. Waste fats are needed for sulfur drugs and other supplies to save the lives of our wounded and for bombs and ammunition to push over Hitler. Every drop of waste fat is needed now as never before. So save all you can and take all you have to your butcher tomorrow. Get at least one friend to do the same. And now here are George and Gracie. Oh, George, isn't it thrilling to think that we're going to Kansas City to sell war bonds? You bet it is. I hope my singing will sell them. Oh, it will. And that money will be used to buy bombs so that our flyers can lay eggs on Berlin. Yeah. Oh, just think. Every time you sing, another egg will be laid. <laughs> Next week, the makers of Swan, the new white floating soap, will bring you George and Gracie broadcasting from Kansas City, Missouri, in behalf of the Fifth War Loan Drive. Our guest will be Dinah Shore. And remember the same time every Monday and Wednesday when you'll hear two other great programs, Lux Radio Theater and Frank Sinatra. Both the same time in the evening and over the same station as Swan Soaps, George Burns, and Gracie Allen. Tune in every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at this same time. This program is broadcast to our servicemen and women all over the world through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Remember George Burns and Gracie Allen, CBS, next Tuesday night, broadcasting from Kansas City with our guest, Dinah Shaw. And now till next Tuesday, this is Bill Goodwin saying, well, I swan, how about you? Tonight, this is CBS, Columbia Broadcasting System. KNX Columbia Square, Los Angeles. The invasion is now underway. Remember, our fighting men need our support to carry this fight to the finish. Buy more war bonds. The People's Bonds. Correct Pacific War Time now 10 seconds before 6.30.